All right. Seems like we're up and running. Yeah. Okay, good. Today we're going to talk about text messaging using Entreport and SMS marketing in general. Uh, why? Because um, y'all are doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, I've been spending some time uh, in, uh, with our support team in the last week. It's been pretty interesting. I've been taking some chats. I've taken about, I don't know, 30 or 50 chats in the last week. I've been talking to some of you and uh, it's been a really interesting experiment. I've never actually um, taken chats in, in support before and it's been, um, it's been really fun. One of the things that I noticed um, is that uh, there's a lot of confusion around text messaging, uh, text marketing, and, uh, and using Entreport uh, features around text messaging. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to, to just cover this and get it all on a video where it can be referenced. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go through it. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the concept of marketing via text in general. Um, you need to understand that uh, text messaging, uh, text marketing, and, and email marketing are pretty different. Um, the whole world of email marketing has been around a long time, obviously, and the regulation around it is, is pretty well settled. And I think that everybody has largely agreed that the, the channel uh, of email is designed to be a marketing channel in, in general and, and that it's uh, okay for, for you to be sending marketing messages via, via email. Um, texting and the whole world of SMS messaging is um, a newer industry. It, you know, t uh, marketing over text is certainly newer. And, uh, and in general, it is, um, it is being regulated a little bit differently. Uh, basically, there's a, you know, many fewer carriers, right? The carriers are the, are the, the Verizons and the AT&Ts of the world that are, uh, and you know, all over the world, there's many carriers, but, but it's a relative, relatively limited number of characters uh, carriers, excuse me, uh, compared to the number of, of inbox providers. It's easy to create a, an inbox, right? So there's a million inbox providers um, and there's probably dozens, a few dozen uh, carriers around the world. And uh, the carriers in general are coming down on SMS marketing uh, with a hammer. And the way they're doing it is that if they see a number sending a bunch of texts that look like marketing, they're just turning you off. And there's not a conversation about it. There's not like a, hey, let's slow it down. There's not like, let's see if people like this thing. They're just shutting you right down. And, and their uh, thinking is that, um, that there is a way to do marketing via text messages and using long codes is not the way. And so let's talk about the difference between a long code and a short code, because it's important to understand. Uh, a, a long code is that nine digit uh, typically nine digit phone number that you know the same the phone number that you have your your cell phone number is you know nine digits plus maybe a country code um, and that is what they call a long code you have one it's your phone number you can get one through Entreport to send and receive text messages on and and that's that is uh, what they call a long code and it is not designed um, by its nature to be a, a marketing tool it's designed more for messaging between friends. And if you are using it in your business to send a reminder, you know, your dentist sends you a reminder that says, hey, don't forget, you got an appointment on Thursday at eight. Um, that seems to be cool too, because um, th that's what's happening and it's, it's designed for that sort of use. But um, you'll notice that hopefully you, I don't get personally any, I mean, I, like the number of unsolicited, um, you know, broadcast text messages I've gotten on my phone is like right next to zero, maybe one or two ever. I know some of you are having uh, larger problems with that on different carriers, but in general it's un uncommon and the reason is because they're regulating it very closely. If they see a bunch of messages coming through a long code, they are just shutting you off. Uh, particularly, uh, it seems to be that they're shutting you off if they see links in your, in your long code messages. That seems to be a, a, a very clear red flag to them. Um, there is another system. It's called the short code system. It's five digits, I think. And, um, 
And you know, when they say like uh, Twitter used to be like, uh, you know, before Twitter was not, uh, was all done on the web and via their app, it was done, you know, Twitter, the birth of Twitter was done via, via um, text messaging. And, and I think the code was like 44444 or something like that. And, um, and, and that system is designed to be used by businesses for broadcast emails. And so if you look at here, I'm just going to pull this, this article up that uh, you guys can see this. Um, and if you look, this is from Twilio's website. Twilio is the provider that m you know, many of platforms like us use to actually deliver your messages. Um, uh, they are a, you know, the system that manages uh, you know, the sending of this stuff. And, and it says here, um, if you're sending, when to use a short code. If you're sending more than a few hundred messages a day from a long code, you run the risk of being marked as spam. Um, short codes are pre-approved by short codes. On the other hand, are pre-approved by carriers to have a high throughput. So understand this: um, Twilio. If you're using a long code, which you are, if you're marketing through Entreport, uh, Twilio says the maximum throughput they're going to allow on a long code is one message per second. That's 60 messages per minute, and in truth. Um, it's actually much slower than that because there's carrier throttling and they throttle you and um, and and so in reality what we see is something more like 20 to 30 messages sent per minute. That's as many as you're going to get out the door through Entreport or any platform that uses Twilio as a back end or really any platform that allows you to use a long code at all. It's just that's that's how the system works. Now that is on a per number basis. So if you were to take your, your, say your thousand person broadcast and to split it up between two numbers, you're going to get that out the door twice as fast. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute if you insist on sending broadcasts of email, uh, sorry, of, of SMS messages through Entreport. There are ways to speed it up a little bit. But in general, the whole system is designed to be slow. Now, of course, this, this, um, this speed throttle doesn't matter if you're telling people that you've got an appointment at eight o'clock on Thursday for, for the dentist um, because you're sending a few out and whether it goes out at eight o'clock or 804, it, it doesn't really matter. But those of you who have tried to you know, send out a webinar reminder to 2,000 people um, at eight o'clock, you notice that um, you know, some of them aren't getting out the door till nine. Now, we actually send them out the door. Uh, so if you look in the contact log, you'll see that it takes us maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or something to send all those messages to Twilio. Uh, but then it gets queued on the Twilio side and they won't arrive for, you know, a while. A wh uh, so that, that is something to definitely be aware of. Plan on something like 20 to 30 messages per minute uh, per number in uh, using a a long code. Now, you can, I believe that we can get you a, uh, a short code um, for use in our system. Uh, I, if I'm wrong on that, somebody correct me, but uh, it doesn't happen very often. The reason is that it's expensive. Uh, it's actually, the prices come down quite a lot, but it's still no joke. It's, uh, it's uh, about a $600 setup fee and then $3,000. Uh, this is just for a US number. It's about $1,000 a month, $3,000 a quarter. You have to pay quarterly, and then you have all the costs of sending the messages on top of that. So, so it's, it's no joke to, um, <clears throat> to, to be uh, sending you know, broadcast high volume throughput on SMS uh, through a short code. Now, you know, th that, that throttling system doesn't happen on, a, on a, a short code, though. You can send them much, much faster um, if, you, if you do choose to do that. But, but the recommendation here is that we don't use SMS messaging as a sort of broadcast marketing tool. It's just it, on a long code. It's just not meant that way, meant to be used that way. Um, you're going to run into problems. Uh, it's going to be slow and you're going to get shut down real fast. Uh, and sadly, I had to um, break this to, to one of our customers just this morning. Uh, e when you do get shut down, you still have to pay the bill because, <laughs> because you get shut down by the receiving end, by the carriers. So we send it to Twilio. Twilio sends it out into the, into the universe and, and they charge you. And so obviously we pass those, those charges along. But, uh, 
but uh, then it gets rejected by the carriers and now you've paid for something that never even arrived. So, um, so do be careful about sending sort of broadcast promotions even if people have opted in, it's just, it's not a matter of whether they want it or not. It's a matter of whether the carriers think it looks like marketing. Um, so that is not the, the design or intention of, of this platform. Now I want to show you what the, the intended design of the intention of SMS marketing uh, using Entreport is. But before we get into that, I want to show you how to set it up. So. So first of all, you need a, and also just uh, as, as always, uh, we're here. I don't have the, the chat right in front of me right now, but we got um, Vince watching, and so he'll call out your questions. If they come up, feel free to ask them. Uh, I don't know everything there is to know about SMS marketing in general, but, uh, but we have been doing this a while. It's amazing, actually. You guys send a lot, a lot of text messages through our platform. We, we first started uh, this, I don't know how many, a few years back. I can't remember how long ago it was. Um, we kind of thought it would be just for shits and giggles. But man, we send, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't know, tens of thousands of dollars, dozens of thousands of dollars a month that we um, that we spend a penny at a time or whatever it is, <laughs> it's it's a lot of text messages that uh, go out through this system. So um, so you need a phone number. Uh, every account on Entreport, we give you one for free. We have to pay for these, so don't sign one up. Sign up for one if you don't need it, because then you're just making us pay for it. Um, but <clears throat> uh, and then after that, I think there's a, a fee. I can't remember what it is. Maybe it's five bucks a month. Uh, seven bucks a month, I can't remember exactly, um, for a second number if you want a second number. Um, but you just click on there, click new SMS number, and, uh, and you can get in here and you can uh, get numbers from all over the world. Uh, if I want one from Australia, you can, oh, I don't know the, I don't know the area codes in Australia, I'm not even going to try. Um, but I'll try here, and I'll say 805, because that's, uh, where I'm from, and uh, and look at this. It's got all these 805 uh, numbers. I can just select the number. Now, um, it's got this little thing that says voice message. Um, the default here is awfully light, but it says, this, so this is what happens if somebody calls your, your SMS number, right? If they, if they actually call you up, it says, this number only accepts incoming text messages. Thank you, goodbye, click. Um, we actually created a little system that, uh, that allows you to, um, it'll actually synthesize the text. So if you type something else in there, it'll say that to them. So thanks for calling Entrepreneur. We don't accept, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, it will uh, read that back to people. You know, if you want to give them their, your website number or whatever it might be. Uh, okay, so you, you click that, you buy a number, and now you've got, um, now you've got a, a number. So. This is just a quick SMS, so just to be clear, if you want to send a, a message to one person, you're going to have to uh, just you know, select them. This is just, you, you can choose one that you've, already, that you've already created, or you can just type one out right, he right here. Type one out. Now, uh, you select um, the uh, phone number, and then this is, uh, you know, if, they, if the contact record has more than one SMS number, you can create, create those um, in, in, uh, in the field editor. So typically it'll be the, the default one there. Now, a couple things I want to say about this. You can throw merge fields. Say, say I was sending this out to a bunch of people. Um, hi, first name, right? Now watch this. It's going to give me a, uh, a warning here as soon as I do this. It says, warning. Uh, this message contains merge fields. It may produce a message that is too long. We won't break it up into any more than 10 messages and the rest will be discarded. So what this means is that, look, we don't know what's in your merge fields. You might drop a merge field in there that might be a super long four paragraphs, right? And um, a SMS <coughs> message is what, 144 characters, I think? Um, and, or 16, 160 characters, sorry. Um, and so if, you, if, if a merge field plops in there and it's 10 paragraphs, we're going to start breaking that up. We're going to make 160 character messages and we're going to break that up and you're going to get charged for each one of those. So if you send this to 1,000 people and it, and it turns into 10 messages per person, that's 10,000 
messages at whatever cost that is, it's gonna be some money, right? So we're warning you about that. Um, the other thing is we're not gonna break it up into any more than 10 messages uh, and we're gonna just discard the rest because we, we're, we're gonna figure you screwed up if you did something um, any longer than that. So, that, so be, be aware of your merge fields. Uh, that's what it's trying to tell you. Um, so then anyway, you, uh, you type it out, you schedule and send just like you normally would, and off the thing goes. Now, is it gonna go to everybody? No, it's not gonna go to everybody because by default, your SMS, uh, your contacts are opted out. So in your, in your contact records, just like there's a bulk email status, let's see if I can find it in my big messy account here, um, SMS number, let's see, um, here it is. Um, so you have bulk email status. We're not going to talk about that today, but uh, we know what it, we we hopefully know what this all means, right? It's it's uh, there's there's various options there. Bulk uh, SMS status is very similar. It's opt out, opt in. A little bit simpler with SMS. They're either opted out, opted in, and guess what? You don't get to change it uh, from opt out to opt in. Um, there's a few ways that contacts can get opted in to SMS messaging, to bulk SMS uh, messaging. What are the ways? Let's talk about it. Um, one, you can capture their SMS number using uh, a form, an Entreport form. So this is the SMS field, the SMS number field. Um, there's some rules about this, just so you know. And, and look, we have to pass along the rules that, that uh, Twilio uh, imposes upon us. So we are, we are in contact with the folks. We send a lot of text messages, like I say, and we have a rep at Twilio who's all up in our grill all the time. And uh, they're asking for things like confirm, they want to see um, where did all these people opt in. The, if, you, if you're using numbers from outside of the states, um, there's a bunch of paperwork. So they'll need to see your freaking passport or your business. Uh, uh, sometimes they'll need to see um, you know, a, a, a bill that shows where your business address is, or uh, it's different. In fact, there's, um, there's a page on the Twilio site. You can see what the paperwork regulations are for numbers in every country. Um, and these uh, regulations, incidentally, they're coming on strong. There's new ones added all the time. I would say that three to six months ago, we didn't even have a Twilio rep that was contacting us on the regular asking about our clients and now it's a all the time thing so this is this is happening uh on the regular and then they're shutting accounts down right if you're breaking the rules they're shutting accounts down so what what do they want they want you to um, be only sending to people who are opted in this is not uh sort of optional like it is with email this is um, required in the sms world so uh, you'll remember that with with uh with, when they regulated email, they wrote a law and it was so silly they called it the Can Spam Act, not the, the Can't Spam Act, the Can Spam Act. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they called it that because it was so lax. Uh, basically says you can send unsolicited messages to anyone as long as you uh, opt them out if they uh, want it and, if, they, and if, they, if you put your, foot, your address in the footer, a couple of, couple of things and you can't, anyway. Um, obviously the email industry uh, raised the bar and that is not, not the accepted um, process. Anyway, in, with the, in the text messaging world, uh, the rules are different. It is not uh, optional, it is not can spam people's text, phone, uh, text messages, or their cell phones. It is uh, cannot, cannot spam their, their text messages and you will get busted, not us. Um, and you'll get busted in a lot of different ways. The first way will be a, uh, a just a shutdown, and uh, but there's laws, man, and they charge. It's expensive to. Um, I think you know it's a lot of money. If you really do this wrong, you, they'll charge you on a per text message basis. You know if they, you know, I don't think it happens often. It's not going to happen to you, but there are some you know bad actors out there that um, that have gotten sued and and find a crap ton of money for doing this wrong. So it's an opt-in system. Everybody has to opt in. And that's why we don't allow you to just uh, blast off uh, text messages to any old person who, um, who, who you want to, because uh, you're, you're all going to get in trouble. And then Twilio comes to us and then we say, oh yeah, we have no idea. These people didn't opt in and then, and then we get in trouble. So um, how do you opt in? Back to the conversation. One, it's on a form 
the form needs to collect their number and it needs to make it clear, not behind like some checkbox terms of conditions, it's gonna make it clear right there on the page. By submitting your cell phone number here, you agree to receive text messages from us. You gotta make it clear what exactly they're, they're, is gonna happen when they submit their, their cell phone. We of course capture the IP address and, uh, and that's the, uh, the proof that you need. The page that they, they opted in on with the, with the notice and, and an IP address where, uh, when and where it was collected. We'd handle all that for you if you're using Entreport forms. Um, that's one way. Another way people can get opted in is by text messaging your number. So if, you, if I were to go back to, um, where is it? I want to SMS this person. If I were to SMS, you know, this number, 805-693-4602, then that's an opt-in. And we would, we actually merge uh, contacts by, um, by SMS number, right? So if somebody SMSs you, we know who that is if, you, if they already have the SMS message in there. If we don't, then, then we don't, of course, right? Um, and we'll talk more about SMS opt-in in a minute, but, um, but that's another way. The third way that many of you want to do it is via API. And, and that is because you have, um, you have some other system that is capturing those, those text messages. Maybe it is your appointment system where you're reminding people about their dentist appointment, or maybe you uh, are using some third-party forum system or whatever it might be, and you want to send over the SMS number um, using the, the API or some, some integration. Um, that's fine, but by default, we do not opt in your people when we get an SMS number via API. Uh, the reason is that our postmasters need to review your program and make sure that you are doing, setting it up correctly. So, uh, so you need to contact support if you want this to work and tell them I want my API to be enabled for collecting SMS numbers uh, on an opt-in basis. And, uh, and they'll ask you some questions. They'll say, sure, show us where they're opting in uh, and, um, and we'll check out the page and then we'll, we'll uh, approve that. Um, the fourth way that you guys want to get these things done is by import. And, um, and when you import SMS numbers, again, their bulk status is opt out by default. So you're gonna again need to contact the postmasters. You can do that at postmaster at or support at and, um, and say I'd like these, these people to be opted in. And when that's the case, again, we're gonna need the, basically the same information that we collect from you, which is, or we collect for you when you use our forms, which is the IP address that these people um, submitted the form from, or the system that they, the, you know, you gotta just basically tell us how these numbers were collected and prove to us that they were collected in a manner that is, um, that, is that complies with the rules of the, of the industry. And so we'll confirm that and then we'll be happy to opt those in for you. But don't be surprised if you try to uh, send uh, an SMS to contacts that are not opted in when it does not get sent because we will not send it unless they're opted in. So you gotta get them opted in one way or another. Okay, now uh, let's, talk about, um, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about opting in via, via text, okay? Um, there are, actually, let me just go to our support site because it shows exactly um, how this works. And I'll type this in here. Send SMS text messages. Okay, so here's how it works. Opt in and opt out. Um, so let's think. How are people going to know to, to, um, to text you? Well, you tell them, right? You say, hey, text me at this number. So if you're just talking to somebody, they may text you and they, and they take your number and they say, hey, send, right? Um, Another way that it often happens is that you're standing on stage and you say something like, hey, I have a super cool resource for you. I wanna get it to you right away. Text me right now at blah, blah, blah. Here's my number, it's on, the, on, my, on, the, on, the, on the, my slides or whatever, on the, on the big screen. Um, text me, pull out your phone, text me right now and I'll get the resource to you. Okay, um, that's real cool. All those people are going to are going to be uh, 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 contacts are going to get created, 
and they'll be opted in and you can send them the thing. We can automate the thing too. Let me show you how we would do that. Let's just, um, let's just put together a quick campaign to show you how you would automate uh, that process. It's not going to end up being the most ideal scenario, and I'll explain why in a second. But, um, but what you might want to do is get a, uh, a number that's, 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 uh, that's set up specifically for this purpose. So SMS received from the contact on this particular number. That's the trigger. Make sure, of course, that it's any contact in the account right here. And then, uh, and then boom, you want to um, send them an SMS back, right? Where is it? Search, SMS, uh, send an SMS, uh, send it back, and, uh, and boom, system's gonna work, okay? Downside of this, though, is that we don't have any way in this version to connect them to uh, a contact record that already exists in your account unless you already have that contact record in your account with an SMS message. Ideally, you want to capture their email address, right? Because uh, email is a, a medium that's designed for marketing. So you can say, just text me and I'll get you the resource. You'll, you'll send it right back via, via SMS. You put a link in here, it's not going to be a problem because you're not, um, you know, you're not at the Super Bowl telling people, hey, um, you know, pull out your phones, right? You're at, at a conference and there's a thousand people there and or there's you know, 400 people there or whatever it might be and 150 of them do it, you're not gonna have a problem with a small number like that. Um, however, good to get their email addresses if you can. So we made this system where it's pretty cool. People, if, they, if you get them to text you, get them to text you not like, hey, send. Instead, get them to text their email address. And we can take this in three different formats. We take just their email address, or we'll take a first name and an email address, or we'll take a first name, last name, and an email address. And if we see any one of those kind of um, setups, we're going to parse that out and put the email address in the email spot, the first name in the first name spot, and the last name in the last name spot. So, so and then we're going to obviously take their, the SMS number that we received the text from and put that in the, the SMS number field and then we will opt them in. And so what's cool about that is you now have a, uh, a SMS number that's opted in and an email address. So let's take a look at this other campaign. This is in, I'm going to just, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to show you how, where, where you can find this thing. Go to new campaign and it's going to load these suckers up and you can type in SMS and just search right here and you will see that there's um, a few different campaigns that are designed for this. SMS lead capture and follow-up. I'm going to show you that one right now. It's right here. Uh, it's, this is a new version, kind of a tricky little version. So what does this thing do? Um, nothing, if you just add them here. But uh, it's got a, a trigger set up. And by the way, um, these have pretty good, not there, it's here. Pretty good instructions uh, in the checklist here, exactly how to uh, set this whole thing up. So follow these along. There's little videos and the whole, the whole nine yards, exactly how to set this sucker up. So, um, but what it's going to tell you is you need to select your, your, um, your SMS number here. And then it's going to check and see, did they message you an email address, right? When that message came in, was there an email address? Did, did, did we collect it and put it in the email spot? If not, if there's no email address, then we're going to send them this message that says what? Hey there, got your text message, but your email address didn't come through. Can you reply to this message with just your email address so I can get you that download I promised? Thanks. Okay, and then when they text this thing, actually we should check this. Uh, this actually says ignore this trigger. We're going to want to move them here again when this is triggered. All right, so that's going to be better. Um, so if they, because, you know, that's going to happen again, right? Because they're going to be down here. Oh, actually, I take it back. I didn't need to do that because they're getting kicked right off this campaign. So they'll be, um, they'll be added again, of course, because they're not on this campaign. Um, anyway, uh, if we do have an email address, what happens? It's going to send them this other text. What does it say? Hey there, got your message and your email address. Thanks for getting in touch. Check your email to get the download, I promised. And then it's going to follow up with an email that says, what does it say? Here's your download. Click the link below. Now you've got a you've got the perfect situation, right? You're delivering the marketing via 
email, you've got their SMS for future follow-up, you're adding them to a longer-term campaign, of course you can just put, the, put more emails in here, but this is a perfect way to capture, um, capture SMS numbers from the stage, or you know, again, you can throw this on a, on a business card, whatever it is you might do. Um, this is a perfect way to manage that situation. Now, uh, let us see. Some of you might say, well, how do I know when somebody texted me? I wanna see when that happened. Well, that's reasonable. Um, what happens with the message, incidentally, so I can just show you, um, is if you go to contacts and you click on a contact, again, my count is so messy. Um, last, uh, there's gonna be a field here somewhere called last inbound SMS last inbound SMS. And so that's going to be a, um, a field that'll get populated and it's going to show you whatever it was that they sent you. All right. And it'll get repopulated every time um, that, that uh, this user uh, texts you. I believe that it's also populated in the, in the contact log here too. You'll see an inbound SMS and you can see the text message in there. So you can or in the automation log, I believe. Um, might be in the, yeah, probably just the automation log. Um, so, because you have that last SMS in a field, you can do, um, you can create a little campaign to notify yourself when people text you, if you want to. But remember, this is not like, this is meant to be an automated system. This is not like yet designed to be like a, hey, let's start a sales conversation via SMS. Because you're not gonna be able to manually through your phone yet, um, send them a text message through through the system. Um, you could conceivably do it. You know, you can create you create a system that does do something like that, a little form, something like that, and and um, and merge that into an SMS text. You could create that. Maybe that would be something we we should put together. That'd be pretty cool. But um, right now, you're just going to get a notification. So what's going to happen to do uh, when I get a message? Uh, from a particular number, uh, I'm going to notify, and you probably don't want two notifications, I just put them both here so that uh, you can see that you can do either one. But uh, these notify with, notify with, these are not going to go out to the contact, these are going to go to a user in your system. So, um, so what does this look like? Uh, we can preview this. Um, hey, you just received an SMS message from first name, last name, here's their email, here's their SMS number, and I merged in that, that field last inbound SMS. So that's going to come into your email, come into your, uh, into your, if you, down here, it'll come to your phone. It's probably the same, uh, same exact thing. Yeah, it is. First name, last name, email, SMS number, and here's the message. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, one more thing I want to show you is that there is in here, um, as some conditions that are pretty fun and useful regarding the, um, the text that was sent to you. So SMS contains an email address, yes or no. SMS does not, does not contain an email address. Um, and then also contains text. So uh, you might have, you know, we've seen people do, you know, crazy stuff, make games, make choose your own adventure paths. Um, but you know, if you could say SMS contains pets, then that might be like a keyword, right? It's a keyword that people can send. So you might say, "Hey, come, uh, you know, text message this keyword to to this number, and I will, you know, whatever it might be. If yes, then this, and if no, well, then you say, well, does it contain dogs or whatever it might be? And you can, you know, create a whole choose your own adventure around the content of that of that uh, of that inbound." SMS message. Okay, I feel like that's pretty much the long and the short of it. We've covered how to collect this stuff. We've covered uh, how to automate responses. We've covered how to seg segment responses by what's in the text. We've covered how to, how to capture email addresses. We've covered what not to do, which is to send big broadcasts, uh, marketing broadcasts out through this stuff. Um, we know now about how long it takes to send messages out. It's not short, it's pretty slow, way slower than email or anything like that. Um, any other questions? Um, actually one, and we might have answered it earlier. Uh, Ryan Parks asks, can you do a two-step process? So step one, SMS your email. Step two, reply with what's your first name. 
set three SMS first name, add that to that same contact record. Can you do that? I do not believe that if you send a word without an email address that it's going to assume that it is your first name. No, I don't think that's going to work. I think that uh, I think that you need to have the first name and the email address be in there together. Otherwise, we don't know what that information is because like I said, they could they could be sending you something that says dogs and you don't want to make that their first name, obviously. Um, so, um, so I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm not sure if you heard the question. The question was, can you do it a two-step process? Uh, can I ask for the email first and then the first name in a second message? Um, I can't think of a simple way to make that happen. I think that it's best to get like first name and email address. Um, of course, you could, uh, you know, you could do it on the web. You could, you could just add another field here um, and, you know, ask for their first name and then you, and then you have that information, right? Um, so, so there's, um, there's that. But, um, but in terms of doing it all through text messages, I don't believe there's a, there's a real good way to, to do that. I hope that is true. Um, is that about it? We have one more actually. Okay. Uh, Dustin Pass asks, is there a way to use it on an evergreen webinar as a reminder so the time it goes out would be based on the webinar they signed up for. So if they sign up for a webinar tonight at 8 p.m., it would go out at 7.45. That is, um, that is gonna be challenging right now because we don't currently have um, weights that are based around, I mean, I guess you could, it depends on, depends on your situation, right? You can certainly create a campaign that um, you know, waits until 8.45 or whatever, um, oops, let's go back up here. Um, you know, wait until um, wait until some time passes, and then wait until the time of the day is you know 8:30, and uh, send the reminder. You might want to go a little earlier just because. Uh, remember, this can take a while to go out. Um, so you know, if you can organize your campaign so that they that all the people that are subscribed for the 8:45 webinar end up down this path, then sure, um, that is that is. Uh, that is, that's, that's the way you would do it in the system right now. Down the road, we'll have, um, we'll have the functionality where you can send, you know, send um, messages two hours before a date time field that is in the account. That's actually, actually something we're working for, working on right now. But, um, but right now, this is how you, would, how you would handle that situation. So when people sign up for the 845 webinar, get them on a particular campaign, and then this reminder goes out. Um, you know, at eight o'clock and, and, and that should work. Okay, good. That seems like the questions. Hopefully we've covered the nuts and bolts of uh, SMS messaging automation. I'm going to avoid using the term marketing because I, I think that that's maybe steering you down the wrong path, but uh, messaging automation in Entreport, um, use it. It's awesome, uh, but maybe don't spam the world with your links to your whatever. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week.